footprint significantly across the globe with the presence in India, UAE, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Bahrain, and Libya. Across geographies, IGB remains rooted in its value of creating excellence with regionally deployed teams and using local expertise. Today's speaker, I'm introducing him. Dr. Zain Siddiqui obtained his PhD from Hafni Institute, Mumbai in microbiology. He was working in Endro Virus Research Center by ICMR for WHO funded project on molecular epidemiology of polio virus. Joined IGB in the year 2006 and working as application support manager for the last 15 years. He has almost 25 years of Sanger sequencing experience and 10 years expertise in NGS. During his tenure, he has also helped forensic labs Middle East to provide latest updated workflow and provided forensic community trainings and support. He is well known in the forensic labs in the Middle East. Dr. Seem Zidiki will be introducing new technologies on the topic end-to-end -end automated DNA forensic solutions and databasing. So all the particip participants are requested to strictly follow the guidelines mentioned by the organizers. So I welcome Dr. Zain Siddiqui for uh, the presentation. Please start the session, sir. <clears throat> Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sonia, for the uh, kind introduction. And uh, I hope I'm audible to all of you. Uh, is yes yeah okay fine thank you very much uh, i'm really thrilled to give this presentation in front of my own people that is the indian people because last uh, 15 years i'm residing in middle east and actually i have done a lot of presentation in the forensic community in uh, in middle east but this is my first opportunity to really present uh, in front of my own audience so i'm really thrilled for that one and uh, thank you, Dr. Sonia, for introducing. And I will start my presentation now. I'll just see if you can. And in between, I will be just toggling my screen for the videos because uh, the videos I have to go to the YouTube. And um, yeah, so uh, just see if. Oh, please carry on. OK, fine. So um, I'll be presenting the end-to-end -end automated DNA forensic solution and databasing in this uh, conference so um just a little bit of our igb territories uh, we are uh, actually as dr Se sonia uh, introduced uh, we started our operation in the middle east in the year 1999 and we have offices all over the middle east and mainly in saudi arabia uae uh, bahrain and uh, qatar and also we are working with some channel partners in uh, Libya. And uh, in 2018, we started our operation uh, in, uh, in India. Okay, giving the uh, complete, actually IGB in this territory is known as the life science uh, solution provider company. And our main goal is to actually give the end-to-end -end workflow solution to our uh, researchers. So right from the sample preparation, whatever is needed uh, to uh, the instruments, reagent software, and uh, for the data management, uh, for the data analysis, and for the data mining. So uh, here also, uh, IGB is not known as the box selling company, but they are mainly consider us as the uh, as their partners. Okay, and they treat us as like you know uh, we are uh, their partners in the technology. So. Uh, our goal is to actually give the end-to-end -end solution to our researchers, okay? So going back to the history of forensic typing, it actually started as early as 1900 where the uh, Lansdainier started the ABO blood uh, typing. Uh, we all know that this uh, was one of the major discovery in the field of science and then as the science uh, progressed, uh, there were uh, too many you know, discoveries, uh, but some of the important discoveries I have highlighted over here, which was mainly uh, you know, uh, good for the forensic uh, typing. 
So one of the major discovery that happened in 1980s by uh, Carrie Mullis, as we all know, that he has developed the PCR, which actually has revolutionized the entire molecular biology <clears throat> field. And then in early 90s, the first STR-based DNA profile was developed. And then the some commercial companies started developing the kits. And in mid or 90s, the first commercially availability multiplex STR kit was uh, available. Then in 1997, actually in uh, US, the 13 core STR loci was defined by the CODIS system. And 2000, uh, routinely the STR was started uh, or adopted by the forensic lab to give the uh, reports. And still the field is progressing and we and now we know that from the capillary electrophoresis, we are into era of the next generation sequencing technology. And now this next generation also has, forensic has adapted very well in this technology. Uh, but in, uh, maybe in uh, later somewhere in another seminar, we will talk about the NGS technology in detail. The most important question that why do we have to type uh, the DNA in forensic? Of course, uh, police has to solve the crime. Uh, the, it also reduces the crime, but the most important thing that uh, the DNA typing does is that it exonerates the innocent. That means if proved innocent, uh, that's the most important thing that uh, uh, the investigative officer has to do it. Uh, the technology that we generally use in the forensic science is called the STR or the short tandem repeats. Short tandem repeats are nothing but they are the repeats of certain DNA sequences. So these DNA sequences are actually uh, present abundant in the whole genome, uh, as we all know now. So here, if you see <coughs> GATA, this is rep repeated in this particular sequence. 12 times. That is what exactly is we are looking for. So these are the actually units which define uh, the, the, um, uh, the reporting format. So you can see that there are uh, various repeats uh, in, for the various uh, different individuals. So these repeats are definitely a discriminative markers in the forensic uh, science. And these are actually embedded in between somewhere the DNA sequences. Okay. And uh, how the PCR technology was is actually used to amplify these STR regions. Okay, so generally, what uh, these kits or what this technology does is it is actually take a primer which is actually labeled with uh, the dye of your of the choice, and then the other primer is unlabeled. You amplify these regions, okay, using the locus specific. Uh, so you can see it is uh, uh, once it is amplified by different uh, type of dyes, then you can put them. Uh, you can actually multiplex them together, or run it on the uh, electrophoresis in the, in the capillary electrophoretic equipment, and this is how the profiles are generated. So you will see peaks of a uh, different color with uh, with the repetitive uh, units okay so these repetitive units will actually discriminate uh, between the dna of an uh, of an individual so there are various types of str repeats uh, in the human dna so they are dinucleotide repeats trinucleotide tetra penta or hexa uh, depending upon what exactly you would uh, you, you, the uh, the reputation that you would like to use. They are, called, they are called short tandem repeats. Some people call it as a microsatellite uh, markers. Okay. And it's, it's, uh, it's also Mr. called. Zain, kindly reshare your screen, please. It's not visible right now. Okay. Just, just a minute. I, there I have been some it. interruptions. Sorry for that. It's okay now? Yes, sir. It's visible now. Please carry on. Yeah. Where did we lost it? It's this slide or the previous slide so I can start it again. Hello? Hello? 
I think it was this slide, sir. From here? Yes, sir. From here. Okay. So, um, STR is actually uh, identified or it is actually amplified using the polymerase chain reaction. Okay. Uh, the one thing that we do in this PCR among the normal PCR is that we are labeling this uh, one of the, uh, the primer, either the forward primer or the reverse primer with a specific. Uh, okay. So, we amplify it and generally these amplified products will be loaded onto the sequencer. So the sequencer is. Uh, you can hear me and the, my screen is fine. Yes, doctor, please carry on. Yes, sir, you are audible. Between, uh, okay, so, uh, so here, once this is amplified, we run it on a sequencer. Sequencer is actually doing a job of uh, electrophoresis. Uh, and the only thing that it does, it, it, uh, we have the fluorescent uh, labeled nucleotide, so it will actually discriminate uh, as per the size. And then you will get these uh, sizes as a peaks in your uh, software. And then we analyze this, how many repeats are there. So this is generally compared with the ladder, which is running along with the, uh, with the sample. So ladder will have uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, from every region of the locus, uh, how many repeats yeah, statistically will be there. So uh, on the basis of that, it will discriminate. Okay, there will be different types of STR repeats. They are, they are called dinucleotide, trinucleotide or tetranucleotide repeats and so on. Um, so this is based on separation to resolve the different allele from each other. You can call it as an STR, you can call it as a microsatellite. Some people also call it as simple sequence repeats, okay. But in forensic science, generally the te tetranucleotide repeats are, have been uh, used. The reason for that is uh, the dinucleotide repeats, uh, although it's abundant in the human genome, but uh, if you look at the, uh, the stacker percentage, it's very high. So as you go from the dinucleotide to the higher uh, repeats, the stacker uh, decreases. So, uh, that, so the best is to use the tetranucleotide repeats. Uh, and most of the commercially available kits are actually using the uh, tetranucleotide repeats. Um, the que then the question arises: how many STRs are there in the human genome? Okay. So human genome, as we see that the effort started from 1991 after uh, the discovery of the PCR and all people started working on that. And it took almost 10 years to have complete one human uh, genome. Okay. And it, it was found that there are uh, these are the abundant, the STRs are really abundant, okay, and uh, there, there are more than 20,000 tetranucleotide loci have been characterized uh, in the human genome. And if you look at, at, or if you count, there may be almost a trillion STR loci present, okay, depending upon how you are actually, uh, actually counting. And approximately 3% of the total human genome is the STRs, that means there are uh, 3% is the, the repeats which are present in the human uh, genome. Now, in the 1997, uh, uh, when the 13 codes was started, uh, but now after the discovery of human genome, more and more loci has been added. So some of the kit actually now can give up to, to uh, 27 uh, loci uh, to discriminate. So this will actually give a very high uh, resolution power. Why do we use STR? What exactly is the advantage? First is, of course, these are very small product size and generally uh, those who actually are on field and they collect the sample, they know that the recovery uh, of the sample is very less. So uh, from these less amount of sample we, uh, which we get it from the crime scene, we really have to generate more. Uh, okay, so, but these STR will be very helpful because they are small in size. Okay, and also it is compatible with the degraded DNA uh, and uh, we can easily do the PCR with that. Not only that, but you can also uh, multiplex the amplification uh, using the fluorescent label dyes and it also gives a high power of discrimination within a single uh, test. And um, basically most of the, uh, the, these kits are available commercially and it's easy to use format, you just have to follow the guidelines and protocol. And there is a uniform set of four STR loci 
which actually provide the compatibility for national and international sharing of the DNA profile. So you can easily share this profile uh, internationally or nationally among states or among nations uh, to each other. So that will actually gives uh, boost the, the reduction in the crimes. When we talk about the, uh, the DNA typing labs, so uh, generally there are two types of uh, DNA labs. One is called the forensic DNA lab and the other one is the database lab. So what exactly is the forensic? Generally forensic labs uh, take the cases of the crime scene samples or somehow the uh, dispute cases. But the databasing lab has actually the, the broad spectrum. So you can have a national database, like for example, you can have a database of the military, database of the airlines, a certain population, criminals, missing persons, and there are many things that you can do uh, in the databasing lab. So how exactly the, the forensic DNA workflow works? Uh, so of course, you take the sample from the crime scene, then you extract the DNA, then you quantify the DNA. So I'll stop it over here to explain it more over here because the, the, the quantification is a very important step in uh, forensic uh, DNA workflow. Because uh, here from the crime scene, let's say if somebody gets a cigarette butt or a specs or a watch, the, the amount of DNA that you get from these epithelial cells will be really, really less. Or sometimes you actually don't have any DNA in that. So this will be one of the QC step, okay, to move it forward or to stop it over here. So if you feel that there is a DNA in your sample, you proceed, you amplify the targets, then you sequence the targets. Then you do the uh, data analysis. So this is the, uh, the workflow for the forensic lab. But if you if you uh, go to the DNA database lab uh, workflow, it is uh, somehow uh, different. Here you collect the sample either from the buccal or the, the, the blood spot. Okay. Uh, then you uh, directly amplify your DNA. So here one of the major thing that we do. The two steps are reduced here, that is the DNA extraction and DNA quantification. We are not doing that, first of all, uh, because here we get the sample in the abundance and the kids that we are uh, working with, we, they, are, they actually can work with a crude lysate. So the, uh, the PCR mix that, uh, that is there in the kit can actually uh, lyse the cell. The crude DNA can directly be used for the amplification, so no need for the extraction or the quantification. Then, of course, you go for sequencing and you do the uh, data analysis. So that, there is a difference between the forensic the DNA uh, workflow and the database uh, workflow. So once uh, we actually define, uh, the, the, uh, we know. Uh, the uh, certain labs they would like to go for the automations and what exactly is the automation? The automation is nothing but the uh, the we are handling or we are handing over all the process that was handled by a human to a robot. So uh, instead of humans doing these uh, uh, these samples, uh, the robots are uh, performing these ones. So automation will actually be successful in the laboratory if act if the automation is actually performing equal to or better than the analysis. So if it is a, almost equal to what exactly the humans were doing or if it's slightly better, okay, and it should be sensitive as manual techniques and it should perform without introducing contamination. It should be robust, reliable and reproducible. And the most important thing is that it should speed up the process in the lab where the, they are getting more number of samples. So what are the factors which actually uh, decide that whether a lab should go for an automation or not? The first thing that uh, what exactly is the throughput of your lab? So if for a rough estimation, if you really are getting approximately around 400 uh, sample per month, possibly uh, you need an automation in the lab. Okay. The second most important, how exactly uh, I mean, you will buy this. Do you have a budget for this buying equipment and the reagent? Um, sample validation on the casework because casework samples are not just one kind of sample like buccal or blood spot, but they are various, uh, you know, the, uh, depending upon what exactly you get it from the crime scene. So 
this is also very much important if you would like to go for the automation that how uh, these samples are working in the automation and of course if there is a man a lesser manpower but the number of samples are more of course you need an automation uh, and also it de determine time to result means it, uh, how quickly you would like to uh, to get this result and there there is a possibility of contamination uh, if uh, manually if a person is handling more than 30 or 40 samples uh, for the extraction there is a possibility that uh, we may get uh, we may introduce some error or the contamination so uh, these are few uh, uh, bullets that actually decide whether a lab would like to go for an automation or not so now uh, i will just show you what exactly is our uh, experience in establishing the automated forensic workflow uh, just looking at the Middle East, we have almost uh, uh, 24 uh, forensic labs in the Middle East. Majority of these labs, of course, is, is in the Saudi Arabia because it's a, it's a large country. So we have almost 16 forensic labs in uh, uh, Middle East. There are five in uh, uh, UAE and two in Bahrain. And also they moved into the database. So uh, Saudi Arabia has two labs for the uh, in fact, now it's uh, three. It's uh, sorry for the, this uh, mistake here. There are three labs in Saudi Arabia. Uh, in uh, in UAE, they have one lab. Bahrain is one. So total is five. Uh, total four, five labs for the database in Middle East. So we'll start with the, the casework and the reference workflow in the uh, DNA forensic lab in Saudi Arabia. The building that you see it over here is the Ministry of Interior uh, building, which is quite a unique in, in Riyadh. So the, this picture is taken from the Riyadh the Ministry of Interior Building. So when we, uh, before we started the automation in the, uh, in the, the lab, the, there were certain procedure they were actually doing automated way, but if you look at the workflow line, they, from the sample collection for the case work, they used to do the manualizing, uh, uh, which is, and the, their sample throughput was very high there. Almost they were getting more than uh, 90 to 96 samples uh, per day. Then they go for extraction using the Biomec uh, 3000. After that, it goes for quantification, normalization using the TCAN, then uh, the amplification, then again C setup. Uh, then it goes for the, the sequencing and the data analysis. So you see here, when you, it takes almost 21 hours for 96 sample uh, to process. And one more thing that you see here, there are number of uh, you know equipments which is uh, handled uh, or which is supplied by different different vendors. So when we see this workflow, we also uh, sat down with them and just check what exactly the sample type that they are getting in the uh, lab. So uh, looking at the category wise. A routine sample which is 95% of them majority of this the uh, the samples were from the epithelial cells okay then comes the dry uh, blood the sexual assault and then nail hair uh, nail hair and tissue and there were very very few samples for bone and uh, teeth okay so there were some bottlenecks for the legacy casework lines first is uh, when you had look into this uh, picture which i had shown you previously there were multiple vendors which actually resulting in lot uh, lack of accountability that means suppose something goes wrong and they are were not getting the result perfectly so one vendor was blaming the other that you know it's not my problem but it is the problem originating from the extraction or from the quantification or from the normalization so there was no account accountability uh, here and uh, it used to take actually the whole day or more than a whole day to, uh, to uh, uh, process 96 sample. Uh, the very important thing was that the sample traceability was not there because you see every places you have to manually go and, uh, and enter the sample. So there was no traceability here. And then the uh, lack of uh, seamless integration. So there was no, so one machine was not talking to another machine. So that means when you finish work from one place, you have to go and and put the data into another uh, instrument. And 
doing that actually there was no qc or qa uh, available so then we proposed this workflow to the uh, igb proposed this workflow so we started with the dna extraction using the hamilton autolyze so this hamilton autolyze actually uh, will uh, automatically lyze the sample thus actually uh, reducing the human intervention in between uh, the, the samples then once the uh, lyzes is over it goes to the hamilton id starlet which does extraction also will do the prepare the quantification plate then it uh, it will go to the real time pcr for quantification then again come back to uh, the result will come back and uh, you know it it does the normalization uh, for the sample because we have to just uh, introduce around 1 nanogram to 1.5 nanogram of dna so if you go beyond that there will be a problem in your pcr so once uh, normalization is done then it goes for the pcr Uh, uh from the pcr then it goes to the hamilton id for the ce setup so everything is automated and then str analysis so you see here there are two labs we propose one one is the pre pcr lab one is the post pcr lab and everything is integrated through the links so here what you can see is that one instrument is actually talking to another instrument once you 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 uh, introduce the sample sheet in the first place in dna extraction uh, procedure the same uh, file will go uh, till the uh, str analysis so uh, and one of the important thing that we have seen uh, here is that the time has reduced from 21 hours to 8 hours for 96 samples here now i will just uh, stop uh, my screen for some time and uh, i will go back to here and i would like to show some videos to you and just would like to see a comment that whether this videos are uh, properly presenting station one of the new generation of smart automation solutions from Hamilton Robotics the Autolis workstation is the first fully automated and compact system to automate the complete sample lysis and DNA purification process thus removing the last remaining bottleneck of the DNA purification process the Autolis workstation guarantees uh is the audio uh, uh is the video audible uh, dr siva Yeah, yes, doctor. Sir, it's working perfectly. Okay, fine, fine. Then I'll I'll continue. Okay, thank you. sample integrity and traceability throughout the lysis process the autolist tube smart design allows complete workflow automation in a fully enclosed and compact workstation thus eliminating all tedious and labor intensive manual sample lysis steps the autolist tube is a smart tube in tube device with 2d barcode identification at the bottom of the outer tube and a non dna binding filter membrane inside the inner tube once the sample is placed in the auto lysis tube manual handling is not required throughout the entire lysis process thereby guaranteeing the complete automation and sample integrity after the initial incubation with shaking required by the sample lysis the autolysis tube is transformed into a spin basket by special autolysis channels without the human intervention the resulting lysate is then filtered into the outer tube by centrifugation to guarantee the best sample recovery and highest yield to facilitate the tube handling a special autolysis rack is used allowing handling of 24 tubes at a time these autolysis racks are in sbs format making them compatible with centrifuges and 2d barcode readers as well as hamilton automated storage systems autolysis tubes also feature a special blue cap to facilitate easy manual handling for a manual workflow The autolysis tubes are placed in the autolysis racks after manually inserting the raw samples into the tubes and matching the evidence sample barcode and the autolysis 2D barcode. 
When loading the autoless racks on the robot, the autoload barcode reading ensures a high level of verification to prevent possible human error. The EasyCode 2D barcode reader will identify and verify the individual autoless tubes. Autoless channels will open and close the inner tube to allow the addition of reagents like lysis buffer. These same channels also transport tubes individually to a heater shaker specially designed to offer the best heat transfer performance during the lysis incubation time. After lysis incubation, the shaking stops and the autoless channels transport tubes back to their original position in the autoless racks on the robot deck. The autoless channels then perform the lift and lock function transforming the autoless tubes into spin baskets by lifting the inner tube and locking it in position. To separate the lysate from cellular debris and sample support, for example swabs, cigarette butts, and any other solid material, the autoless racks are centrifuged. The lysate goes through the sterile filter membrane of the inner tube, resulting in a clear lysate in the outer tube. After centrifugation, the racks are transferred back to their original positions on the robot deck. To access the clear lysate, the inner tubes are lifted and removed. The pipetting channels then transfer the clear lysates from the outer tubes to the destination format of your choice, for example, tubes or plates. The sample lysis process now is completed. Optionally, you may continue with DNA purification in this same method run. The Autoliss workstation offers the time-saving benefit of performing the sample lysis process completely unattended. Tedious manual handling steps are eliminated. It minimizes the risk of contamination from human error. There is total traceability and chain of custody is maintained by barcode reading. Whatever your throughput needs, whether 24 or up to 96 samples or more with a single run, Autoless Workstation can be adapted to meet your needs with a guarantee of sample integrity and high DNA yields. Yeah, so uh, you have seen this video. Uh, doctor, uh, it was audible throughout. Yes, doctor, it was perfect. Please carry on. Okay. So, uh, once uh, you know you finish with the autolysis, so you have seen that you know how this autolysis works without even uh, human uh, touching any tubes. So, even the screwing and screwing of the tubes. Okay, uh, uh, and also the most important thing is the sample traceability was there. Okay, then once this is over, then uh, the sample of uh, the lysate will go for the extraction okay and the normalization process so i will show another video here zain prabhu here i think you need to go back to your original screen zain yeah you need to go back core to your technology screen. prevent possible contamination issues and help yes sir, it's audible now you can to facilitate your final validation process. To comply with modern laboratory quality standards, the ID Starlet ensures a very high level of traceability and can be integrated with sample management systems to eliminate tedious and labor-intensive manual steps. The ID Starlet offers different configurations to automate DNA purification. It's still not audible? It's audible, sir, but uh, can you play it from the beginning? I think we lost a ah, bit. Okay, of... okay, 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 fine, fine, sure, sure, I'll do that, yeah. As of human ID laboratories, it has been designed to streamline the different steps of the pre-PCR process of all DNA forensics laboratories. The ID Starlet combines Hamilton Robotics Technologies' advanced features and Life Technologies' human identification kits to offer a complete, fully tested solution ready to run in your laboratory. All methods have been verified together with Life Technology Professional Services to ensure automated kit performance matches the specifications and offers fast and easy implementation. 
Hamilton's superior pipetting technology, liquid level detection features, and Hamilton proprietary core technology prevent possible contamination issues and help to facilitate your final validation process. To comply with modern laboratory quality standards, the ID Starlet ensures a very high level of traceability and can be integrated with sample management systems to eliminate tedious and labor-intensive manual steps. The ID Starlet offers different configurations to automate DNA purification, quantification, and STR normalization setup. The system can be adapted to your current workflow to accommodate all kinds of input or output labware. Various carriers and adapters are available and you can choose from different types of tubes or plates as input or output formats. The customized software developed for the ID Starlet allows you to choose from three method groups. Each method group is independent and automates a number of different fully tested protocols. DNA isolation using the PrepFiler Forensic DNA Extraction Kit purifies DNA from nearly any type of casework or database sample in either tube or plate format, saving hours of DNA preparation time. Quantification using the ABI Quantifiler or Quantifiler Duo DNA Quantification Kit. This simplifies real-time quantitative PCR assay setup to rapidly determine sample suitability for forensic DNA STR typing. STR Normalization Setup This carries out automation of complex normalization and STR setup procedures over a widely varying DNA concentration range. You may choose from one or more of the many available ABI STR typing kits. This assures successful downstream STR typing analysis. The user is guided through the method setup by a detailed graphical user interface. To facilitate the process, the method allows the user to interface directly with input or output files of ABI Life Technologies instruments. Additionally, the STR normalization dialogues and worklist viewer allow the user to optimize final DNA concentration. The user is guided throughout the loading process. Reagents volumes are calculated and clear loading dialogues help the user through the process as well. In order to adapt to your laboratory workflow, Worklist Viewer and Dedicated Interface make the whole process simple. Positive and negative controls, as well as standard curve, can Hamilton Star systems are known for their reliability, flexibility, precision pipetting and positioning, and functional software, including multiple sample tracking offerings and complex error handling. Together, these and other features have led to Hamilton Robotic Liquid Handling Platforms becoming the world leader for genomic, life science, and pharmaceutical laboratories. The automated ID Starlet methods are designed to eliminate human error, reduce contamination, and increase data integrity and traceability, all leading to increased productivity and more rapid sample turnaround time. Okay, so you have seen this video. So here you can very well see that uh, the Hamilton ID Starlet can do the extraction, normalization, preparing the quantification plate, uh, uh, automatically and uh, everything is traceable. Okay. Uh, was this video uh, quite audible? Yes, Dr. Zain, it was audible. Okay, now I will go back to my presentation. I'm sorry for tagging this one, but this is the only method I got it for. Yeah. So here you can see my screen. Not yet, sir. Yeah, it's coming. It's, it's there? Yes, sir. It's, it's visible now. Please continue. Okay, fine. So we have seen this. Seen this. Okay. So now, how exactly we resolve the bottlenecks of the post, uh, uh, post integration? Of course, you see that you know it reduced the processing time uh, by 40%, okay, from 21 hours to 8 hours. And you have clearly seen in the video also that there are no manual steps involved.
Okay, so, uh, and it is done using the uh, autolyze system. The, after that, it was extraction, normalization, and quantification was prepared by the Starlet ID, which is also automated. What customer also has seen that, you know, the yield of DNA after that was really high and you can scale it up. Okay, so that whenever your sample throughput is going uh, up, you can scale the, uh, the number of instruments. Then from the forensic lab, we go to the databasing lab for in same in the Ministry of Interior for Saudi Arabia. So here they are using two types of samples. One is the buccal swabs or the blood spot on the card. So, and both the method can be uh, applied for doing the automation. So this was, again, if you look at the uh, legacy workflow, there was no difference between the previous uh, workflow, which is the forensic one, and you see in the database lab, except that they, the, in, the sample was in the FTA cards. So from the FTA cards, they used to punch using BSD 600 uh, puncture. Okay, that is also kind of a manual step where one by one, you really have to punch the, uh, the card. Then they go for the DNA extraction, <coughs> the quantification, uh, normalization, uh, amplification, capillary electrophoresis, C setup, and the data analysis. So you see, to complete this one again, they used to take 24 hours for uh, 96 sample. And, and again, if you look at this uh, workflow, there were uh, multiple vendors, uh, you know, involved in this. So this is what we proposed. And looking at the workflow itself, it says that it has really reduced a lot. So once they get the sample uh, on the uh, nucleic acid card or the buckles, uh, buckle uh, also can be put it on the on the card. Then it goes to a liquid handling system using the Hamilton uh, Easy Punch. Okay which uh, images uh, the card and do the punching automatically. We will see a video for this one also. It, then here we are not doing any extraction. So directly it will go to the thermal cycling for the PCR. Uh, then the C setup again for the automated C setup using the Hamilton Starlet ID, capillary electrophoresis and data analysis. And look at that, that everything is integrated, right from the your you know color sample collection to the downstream application like uh, your uh, and, and uh, data analysis. Then I'll, again, I will stop it here. I'll show one more video for you for the easy point. And just let me know whether this is audible or not. Sample card punching and liquid handling into one automated workflow. It addresses the need for seamless integration of sample card punching with extraction, minimizing human errors and enabling high throughput. Easy Punch offers the flexibility to tailor the system exactly to your workflow. LIMS compatibility and full traceability of the sample make sure that data can be linked confidently to each sample. The system supports automated loading of multiple resources required on the deck, such as magazines holding the sample cards, plates, tips, and reagents. An interactive dialog confirms that each resource is loaded to the right position. The target plate is transported from its position on the deck to the punching station by a special gripper on the robotic arm. It is then placed on a plate slide moved by magnetic connections. A card is picked up from the magazines and moved to the table for imaging. The image is automatically analyzed for certain parameters, such as barcode and sample location and shape. The punch position will then be determined according to the predefined imaging parameters. The card is inserted into the punch head and the determined position is punched into the target well of the receiving plate. An ejection pin makes sure that the punch discs eject properly from the punch itself. Different standard punch sizes of 1.2 millimeters, 2 millimeters, 3 millimeters, and 6 millimeters are available. 
To avoid contamination, cleaning punches can be made either from the same or from separate cards. A vacuum system is integrated to remove dust from the punching action in order to prevent cross-contamination. An ionizing system removes statics from the microwell plate to ensure accurate dispensing of the punch discs into the wells. Extraction reagent can be added to all positions required. The different troughs allow for a variety of extraction solutions that can be used for individual samples within the same method, making the Easy Punch a flexible tool for method development. The software is flexible enough to allow modifications in your assay, for example, different volumes of reagent. If necessary, even the whole workflow in the software can be tailored to your needs. Individual parameter settings can be used for different card and sample types. For example, plasma spots on blue indicating cards can be detected using different imaging parameters. This allows complete freedom in the choice of your sample. For each run, work lists generated by an LIMS system can be loaded to specifically position the samples on the plate. Easy transfer of the trace data by an export file customized for your LIMS makes sure that you have all the data about the process samples stored centrally. One of the most important sources of errors is mixing up of samples. During loading, all barcodes of magazines and plates are read and traced. In addition, Easy Punch traces every card and every sample punched out of this card. Before punching, the barcode of the card is decoded and a picture of the card is stored in a local database and can be re-evaluated if required. It can be exported to an LIMS system. After each punch, the position of the punch disc in the target well is confirmed. This makes sure that the right punch is in the designated well. Easy Punch is the first commercially available system integrating sample card punching and extraction into one automated workflow. It addresses the need for seamless integration of sample card punching with extraction, minimizing human errors and enabling high throughput. Easy Punch offers the flexibility to tailor the system exactly to your workflow. LIMS compatibility and full traceability of the sample means that data can be linked confidently to each sample. Yeah, so you have seen that how uh, the Easy Punch has made really life easy. So here everything is automated. Uh, you can very well, uh, you know, trace each and every sample, each and every card. The data is saved. Okay, and any time any QC is required for this data, uh, that can be obtained. Uh, you know, if you you have to present it uh, somewhere. I will continue with my presentation. You can see my presentation now? Yes, Dr. Zim, it's visible now. Please carry on. So uh, here's some picture after, you know, once we have done everything to the, to the lab, uh, uh, we have taken the pictures uh, with the forensic lab people and then you can see the smiling faces and they were quite happy with, uh, with the performance of these uh, instruments and I think last uh, five, six years they are continuously using this, uh, this system. Uh, another project that we did uh, for the databasing is with the Ministry of Defense for the Saudi Arabia. So now why exactly we started this uh, project with Ministry of Defense? Uh, as you all know from the news, you might have heard that uh, Saudi is in war with Yemen since uh, 2015. Uh, from till date, the war actually got uh, really prolonged. They, they were not expecting that the war will go for, for that uh, long period. And in between, uh, thousands of actually soldiers, they died. And some of the bodies of the soldiers were actually beyond identification. They were highly mutilated. So you, uh, they were not being able to identify uh, the bodies because that the main reason was there was no uh, military DNA database. Uh, so that was there was some pressure from the family members of the disease that uh, there should be some system where the bodies can, should be isolated. 
So the, under the royal decree of the Crown Prince uh, Hamad bin Salman, he approved the central lab for doing the DNA database. So this databasing lab was actually uh, 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 done in the Ministry of Defense uh, in India. So uh, this was the scope that to build a DNA database lab with capacity of actually 100,000 samples in Indian language, one lakh per year. Uh, and, uh, and a casework lab. So the casework lab, because the body's uh, sample will come in, uh, they will uh, they will try to match it. So the, they needed complete automation from sample to result and also the uh, limb system. And there should be a supply of these HID kits, uh, sample collection kits, consumable for over four years, targeting um, three lakhs uh, sample here. And also, they needed service and support for this uh, uh, contract period. So this is what we proposed then. Uh, <clears throat> sample submission area, where they, they used to receive the sample. Uh, then after the sample is registered, uh, uh, they will put it in a magazine with the cards. Okay, this magazine and the card will go into the sample pair punching lab. The video that you have seen, the easy punching lab. So here they will punch the sample and do the, the, the uh, PCR. Then it goes to the post PCR for performing the uh, capillary electrophoresis and also the data analysis. And everything right from the sample submission to the data analysis, uh, this uh, these, uh, process is through limbs, okay? And they are talking to each other. So they, you can easily trace uh, the sample, okay? So we have actually built this infra in infrastructure of this lab with processing 150,000 samples per year. Okay, and we our target is to supply these kits and cons for around 500,000 samples for a period of four years. So what was actually uh, required for this uh, project execution? So build a lab, okay, supply, install the equipment and validate and the time period was very short. It was within six months we had to do it, uh, but we did this, we implemented this uh, project uh, very well with the help of uh, Thermo Fisher HPS uh, team and also the, uh, uh, we, have, uh, we have done the local training as well as the local overseas training for their staff. IGB also assist in recruiting this manpower to run this lab. We almost uh, you know, uh, guided them to recruit around 10 to 15 people, including the analyst uh, to the lab. And we also help them with our dedicated FAS resources for a period of one year. So one year, uh, uh, our resource was continuously working with them till uh, they felt comfortable that now they can run this uh, DNA database now. So you can see this is how we have done it uh, in the, uh, their lab, right? Actually, we have done the entire uh, lab design, the, uh, the uh, furniture designs and everything is done by, uh, by IGB. And this is handed over to them in October 2017. And from there, actually they started slowly with 2,500 samples per month. And then they scaled up to 6,000 samples. Uh, in the first year, uh, they completed uh, 50,000 sample. Second year, uh, their target was 80,000 and they achieved 80,000. And now our plan is to complete 100,000 samples this year. Uh, then another project we did it in Libya for identifying the missing people. So a little bit of background there that, uh, you know, uh, after the regime of uh, Colonel Gaddafi, there were many mass graves uh, discovered across uh, the country. Okay, so during this uh, his reign, uh, there were complaints from several families that their 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 uh, the members got missed, and they really don't know where exactly these members are. So the the uh, at that time they started thinking about this mass grave. What was discovered that possibly there will be some link between the missing person and the graves over here. So the DNA was extracted from this human remains, okay, from various sites. And also they tried to match it with the reference sample from the living family uh, member. And this project actually was authorized by the Ministry of uh, Martyrs and Missing Person. And our target 
was to build the fully automated lab uh, to run sample from these mass grave and the reference. So this is again the same thing what we did in the Ministry of Defense, the same um, <clears throat> solution we have proposed right from the sample submission from uh, for the uh, for the family members uh, the sample material and then the, the similar process uh, to go for until uh, the data analysis and everything was uh, traceable. So here, uh, as many, these many projects we have executed in the uh, Middle East. So we have almost 16 forensic labs. Uh, we have helped the uh, military database. And uh, last year, we actually did uh, one of more project for the databasing uh, uh, in the presidential security lab uh, in, the, in care, Saudi. Uh, and these are the various uh, you know projects uh, that we have executed in the uh, last few years. Then I would like to emphasize some more important aspect of having actually uh, DNA databasing, and then I will. I think um, the time is also running now. So um, now uh, to look at the databasing point of view, there was a very important finding from the Virginia that. Approximately 35% of the violent crime uh, they were able to solve, okay, because they were done by the individual who were caught on the property crime convictions and their DNA was there. So uh, once they did some violent crime after the property theft, they, they were caught, okay. So this one was uh, taken uh, very seriously and cold hits on this DNA database. Uh, from the you know previous criminal conviction offenders, it, uh, they they see that they they could get you know a lot of uh, cold hits uh, because they had this uh, DNA database uh, taken from the uh, from the criminals, previous criminals. So uh, the this is a slightly old slide. Uh, sorry about that, but I don't have the updated one. Uh, not 42 countries, but I think uh, there are as many as uh, slightly more, maybe more than 55 or 60 countries has already gone for uh, the databasing. And seeing the success of these databases, some of the, the other countries are also uh, following the, the food step. But if you look at the map still, I think uh, in India, we are still lacking. Even the criminal databasing, uh, we don't have it. Also, there is a very good experience uh, from China that they are, they are the uh, DNA plays a key role in solving murders. The, the China Daily Crime says they have already done over 100 million samples uh, in their databasing, and uh, the by the end of 2020, they are estimating that they will be finishing around 140 uh, million samples, which is really a good amount. So there should be a balancing act between the public safety and the privacy. So if you look at the DNA for public safety to help to resolve the crimes, so up to 60% of the cases have a hit rates. So uh, it also reduces the crime because uh, if the criminal has already been, the, da the data from the criminal already has been taken once they release, to do the second crime, they will think that they're, they're uh, you know, profile is already is there with the police and if uh, they do something wrong they will be caught okay so uh, because of that there was a 26 percent decrease in the uh, uh, burglary cases in the Denver in the United States and also uh, it saves the resources okay so state of Indiana uh, could save up to 60 million per year by increasing the DNA database to include RSTs offenders because the cases can be solved very quickly. Okay, so they don't have to spend a lot of money to uh, to solve the case. Okay, so here uh, I will just give uh, one uh, case reference that how important is the databasing uh, by this uh, particular case. This guy, well, his name was Marco, uh, residing in Brazil. Okay, so and Brazil we know that. Uh, uh, a lot of crimes uh, happens in uh, uh, Brazil. In 2006, there was uh, the Brazilian Congress actually reject the legislation to allow DNA to be taken from the 
convicted offenders. So they uh, they they didn't take any. Uh, I mean, there was no law uh, to that the convicted sample should be taken and stored. This guy, Marco, he was released from prison in 2008 for a violent crime. So, but they had not taken in their DNA because there was no law. So what he did, then he raped and murdered almost five women in uh, Belo uh, Horizonte during 2009, leaving the DNA at all the crime scenes. Okay, but since his DNA was not there in the database, so at the first crime itself, if if it would have been there. Then at the first crime, he should have uh, been caught. But the four of the five uh, murderers could have been prevented in Brazil if the Congress would have passed the legislation. So look at these pictures, the innocent women. This was the first victim of his. But these four ladies could have been saved if his database was present uh, in uh, in the uh, criminal database, so the life of these innocent uh, uh, ladies could have been saved. So, once uh, they, uh, the uh, relatives of those uh, you know, victims, they approached the Brazilian sanity president in uh, July 5, 2011, and they actually forced the, the Congress to uh, establish the, the uh, DNA databasing lab and I think after these uh, incidents the uh, Brazil government has passed the law for the uh, uh, for the databasing of the criminals. So it's I would say it's just the beginning not 42 but now there are many countries uh, they will be following these uh, 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 rules and I hope that India will be one of them to have the uh, DNA database so that we will reduce uh, the crime in our country. And uh, IGB is also known all over the uh, GCC countries as a preferred partner once it comes to the forensic science. And we are actually taking part in all the forensic conferences happening uh, in the Gulf region. This is one of the examples uh, over here. So this, is, this was the GCC conference in Bahrain, which was in November 13 and 14. Okay, and I think that's it from my side. Uh, thank you very much. And I would like to thank all the organizers for giving us my time slot to, uh, to give me uh, the introduction about the automation. Uh, uh, I'm ready to take any questions here. Thank you very much. It is from uh, Kamesh Pandian. He's He's asking about, you have shown automated sample processing method. What about manual methods? We will get result on manual sample processing DNA extraction methods or not? Yeah, yeah, actually, uh, see, uh, what was the name, sorry? Uh, uh, his name is Kamesh Pandian, sir. Yeah, uh, uh, Kamesh, uh, you can very well do whatever is automation. You know, you saw it in automation. Everything can be done by manual steps. Okay. Now, why we are doing uh, automation over here? If and I have shown in my uh, first slides that automation is necessary or needed. Not necessary. I would say needed if you have too many uh, samples, uh, you know, to process. Because if one person, uh, in my personal experience, if a person is handling more than twenty-five or thirty sample in one go there is a chance that he will make some mistakes okay and there is a chance, and there will not be any traceability for that so there will be uh, issues like cross contamination you may, and crime scene samples are very precious samples okay they can't be lost reference sample you can get it again but the crime sam scene sample uh, you will not get back so uh, mainly for this particular reason if you have more number of sample it's better that we should put everything on the uh, on the automation. So I hope this answers your question. Oh, thank you, sir. And uh, I think we have Mr. Rebin Grelan. He needs to ask you some question. Mr. Rebin Grelan, are you there? Okay. I 
think we lost him. I don't know. Uh, OK, so if the participants are having no more doubts, then I think we can go for the concluding session, sir. Yeah. I request. Adira, excuse me. Uh, actually, B. Joseph, sir, have some queries. Uh, how can you support India database project uh, in terms of automation? Yeah. Dr. Sain. Yeah, I think the way we have done it, uh, you know, you have seen how we have executed uh, the projects uh, in uh, Middle East. Okay, the same way uh, our team is quite compatible enough to, uh, to you know, handle even if there is a request from uh, the uh, Indian government uh, for, for establishing the lab. So we have a, a really a handful of experiences, you know, in establishing the data. See, the example is the uh, Ministry of Defense database, where we actually process more than now we have we, we have almost processed more than 200k of uh, samples. So uh, uh, this rich experience we can bring it from the Middle East to, of course, and we would like to help our own uh, con. Uh, con Hello. Yeah, I hope I answered this question. Yes, Dr. Same. And some queries are regarding the database. Uh, what's the condition of database in India? Do you know anything about like that? Uh, I think honestly, I uh, maybe you will be the best person to answer this yeah, question. Yeah, but I think uh, Dr. Sonia, ma'am, would be elaborating on that one. Uh, yeah. Dr. Sonia, ma'am. Are you ready? Ma'am, they are asking about the um, DNA data bank project in India. Uh, what's the present status and all? And a little bit because we don't have that much. Uh, we, uh, until date, we have not initiated other than there are one project now we started uh, uh, with the funding from the Department of Biotechnology that is mainly have a Genome India project. Uh, but that uh, is it's a general thing and not at all, uh, not, nothing with kind of, like uh, um, general one, like the communities and the other thing. So this is only a start project. So in that case, 20,000 uh, uh, samples are only taking and uh, we also have engaged, we also have to do that we have to be a population. So this just, I think, launched and we started working, uh, started working on that. More than that, uh, until now, there is nothing, uh, I think, no initiative taken from other persons. That is what my knowledge is. Uh, Abhi Joseph, sir, uh, do you have any comment on that one? Abhi Joseph, sir. We are also having our uh, our database we started, like whatever we are getting, we are uh, also adding to the Kerala population. Thank you. Uh, OK, Dr. Shiva, actually, uh, Fortunately, uh, I'm actually the, one of the customer of uh, uh, IGB Integrated Gulf Biosystems in uh, Bahrain and UAE, both in the crime lab and the database lab. Okay, so what I have seen is their uh, commitment and their uh, support service. That is very important in uh, when you are in a, working in a DNA lab. The support service is very important. And they provide all the uh, innovative uh, automated technologies, which actually really helped us to avoid contamination. Actually, in manual uh, um, now process, we are handling you know a lot of samples and multiple you know cases, which you know really you know put in us uh, trouble that we can get into contamination and all the cases will be in trouble. So. Automation really helps. Even the Hamilton, which I worked in Abu Dhabi Police Forensic Lab, uh, when I joined with them, and in Alain the DNA Data, National DNA Database, also which I have experience. Actually, it's a really uh, a good company which uh, we can really trust. And uh, in India, which last week, which I had a, con uh, co a conference with uh, Indian uh, Data, National DNA Database authorities where they discussed actually they are soon going to implement after the parliament it is passed in the Rajya Sabha it is going to be you know passed and after that the Indian database will be implemented because you know as you know the China conflict and also we are also very keen to implement all our defense or um, our army database to be established very soon 
so the automation will, will uh, really help us to you know you know uh, uh, streamlining the all the workflow you know is in a very good format and especially uh, dr sonia madam is in rajiv gandhi center so she can also you know apply the automation technologies you know there are a lot of backlogs in the cases and all in all around india uh, really automation will help and uh, igb is a company which uh, really you know i am uh, 24 years who you know i i was a customer of them so really it will help them all indian you know as an indian dr saim rightly mentioned that you know so uh, we all are from india so really you know we uh, we are all are patriotic so really uh, you know it will be helpful all right thank you yeah it will be really interesting you uh, just said also actually for our nation yeah, so, actually my my view is you know looking at this uh, just i presented one case of this brazilian history so even if we have a base of this limited uh, uh, people then it's it's very easy becomes at least you know 50 60% at base becomes a cold hit chance will become uh, really to solve it uh, soon and this uh, reduces a lot of resources as well and also will save money yeah that's right dr saim actually you highlighted more into saudi arabia you didn't mention much about bahrain and uae <laughs> <laughs> actually if i keep doing that well i we have done the similar thing in you know uae and bahrain also so we just gave example of one lab if i keep i keep talking about another 2 hours for <laughs> for this and as well it's okay it's okay because the solutions are similar you know there is no difference in what we proposed in ks and what we proposed in abu dhabi and the bahrain uh alain all, all are almost working on a similar line so any more questions uh, i think now we can can we conclude shiva now yes ma'am please uh, if you have any further queries you can ask ma'am otherwise we can conclude yeah anything now we can ask and then okay thank you very much dr siddiqui for the wonderful session and you enjoyed your presentation a lot and it, it was very interesting and let's the forensic community in the country start changing with the innovations that you have mentioned i thank all the particip participants for your active discussion and being a part of this webinar of indian criminology and forensic science association thank you all yeah it, thank you very much uh, uh, dr sonia dr siva and all the participants giving us chance to to show this uh, i hope uh, this was uh, really beneficial to to all of us and uh, maybe we will take this up uh, and in to our country and like what we did in middle east uh, yes. for sure we will replicate this in uh, in our own country yeah yeah and anybody has any question they can contact me uh, you can share my email address uh, yeah. they can put the questions i can i'm happy to assist them Yes, Doctor Same. I'll be sharing your details and the participants' details to IGB, so you can yes. contact them directly in future yes. also. So, okay, thank you, thank you, uh, Sonia, ma'am, uh, Doctor Same, A B Joseph Sir, Doctor Prabhu, Mr. Bala Subramani, Mr. Bimal, and Adhira, ma'am, and all other respected members of ICFSA. my colleagues and participants for uh, being in this session and for your time. thank you all uh, you can mention your uh, participants you can mention your uh, name and email id in the chat box and can leave the yes. session